when ye have lighted a candle, put it, it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, the whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkened. If the whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Amen. And to, the title of today's message is the light bearer, the light bearer, amen. Um, rarely do I tailor messages, amen, to events and things that are going on in the world. Uh, rarely do I do that, but I do have to acknowledge that uh, today is September 11th, amen. And so, um, you know, it was a tragic day in this country. Now, granted, that was in 2001. Amen. Um, but at the same time, we still like to acknowledge. Uh, I'm not a big person. I don't remember a lot of dates. I, I really don't. I don't remember dates. But I do remember September 11th only because my son was with me. Uh, I had just come back off of uh, deployment and I uh, had did some special missions and everything. And they have in the Navy what they call Tiger Cruises. Amen. And so, uh, I was able to fly my oldest son to Hawaii. We spent some time in Hawaii. And exactly September 11, when it happened, we were actually on the ship. And so they was talking about uh, flying them out and, and different things. So that will always hold a special moment in my life, amen, because I was with my son, amen. Uh, but we do want to acknowledge that now. I can, you know how we preach it, we can always tie something in. Hey, man, uh, Luke 11 represents September 11th. You know, I could do it that way, but I don't do that. But please acknowledge September 11th and make sure that you say your prayers out for those who have lost loved ones or this day is a day of sorrow for them because of the firefighters and the policemen and the different over 3,500 people that was uh, lost in those uh, Twin Towers. Amen. But even in that situation, there had to be a light bearer. There had to be someone to be able to speak to those souls. There had to be someone to speak to those people that are grieving, to let them know they're going to be okay. The light bearer. We are the light bearers, especially during a time when the earth is so dark right now. We are looking at a lot of different things. I know and immediately when we start talking about the darkness, we automatically look at the elections. Just ain't nobody happy. People ain't happy with Hillary. They ain't happy with Donald. They're not happy with uh, Johnson. Just people's just not happy. You know, they, they 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 think that this country is is going to a uh, hell in a handbasket. They talking about the corruption. But I'm here to tell you the one thing that makes this country great is the people that are sitting in this building this day. There is not a country on this earth that has a single collection of Christian believers like the United States. Amen. And so I want to encourage you to vote. Yes, please vote. But I'm not here to talk a political stance. What I'm telling you is the value of your life. There is value in your life. You are the light bearer when you call yourself a child of God, when you call yourself a saint, when you call yourself a Christian, you have an obligation to bring light to people. Amen. When people are negative, when people start speaking of discord, when people start speaking of distrust, when people start being angry, when people start being mad at their neighbors, when people want to start fights at their school, when people want to start fights in the grocery store, when people want to rape and pillage and loot, you have an obligation to speak truth into their life. Amen. 
This is why God saved you. He didn't save you so you can stay within the four corners of your own home. He didn't save you so you can have Jesus for me and mine and all by myself. He saved you so that you can bring light to others. Why? Because light will always shine in a darkened room. You are the light. We know that Jesus is the light of the world, but if you have Jesus down on the inside of you, then you possess that same power. You possess that same ability. During this time, you're going to find out that people are going to be grieving. There is a lot of grief that is going on. You're going to find out that a lot of people are sad. A lot of people are heartbroken. Some people have given their own outlook on life as to be dull. But I'm here to tell you, you should encourage people. People are going to make mistakes. People are going to do some things wrong. People are going to lie on you. People are going to steal from you. People are going to hurt you. People are going to cheat on you. And the natural tendency of your human nature is to deal disdain towards them. It's to cut them off. But I'm here to tell you, God forbid, you show them light. You show them love. Even in the midst of their situation. Even in the midst of the situation. Now, that, that, that takes a different connotation because you might say, well, well Pastor, what about if I'm in a, a domestic violence situation? I ain't going to tell nobody to stay and be beat. But there is a way to come out of that situation still showing love. There is a way to come out of that situation and not come out hate and bitter. Yes, you must leave to protect your life or to protect your children's life, but you can still come out of that in such a way. Why? Because this is what we are here for. Yes, we may not be certified counselors, but we are certified Christians. And there is a difference between the two. If you don't understand Jesus died for more than just you, then you're just as lost as the people in the dark. So the first point that I want to bring out to you is there is no light like your light. Understand that. There is no light like your light. You have to understand your individuality is who you are. Your individuality is why God created you. You can't be me and I can't be you. You got to be the best you that you can be. Why? Because God created you to reach people like you. Birds of a feather, what? But I don't care how many birds flock together. All you got to do is look in the sky. And what you see about birds is someone always leading the pack. Birds have a way of just naturally falling in line. So I'm asking you, are you that light? Yes, birds of a feather do flock together. Are you that light? Because people follow light. You want to see how many bugs you got in your house? Turn off all the lights in your house except for one. And watch where the bugs go. They're going to fly to the light. You can kill them. Yeah, yeah, get that zap like zip. Why? Because natural tendency for anything is to flock to light. This is why God saved you. I don't care if you're in the ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, freshman in college, all the way up to a senior in college. God saved you to be a light. Yes, so you got to understand who you are. There is no light like your light. And if you are down, if you are depressed, if you're mad at the world, then guess what? God has not been able to help you. Why? Because you haven't been able to allow him to help you. Don't allow the devil to steal your joy. Your situation might be in dire straits. Mom and dad might be split up. Husband might be crazy. Wife might be crazy. You might be broke. You might not have the new clothes. You might not have any of that. But none of that is relevant to the light that is on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if your light shine bright, somebody might just come and help you out. Understand, God got many angels all over. The Bible even tells us, be careful who you entertain. Why? Because you may entertain angels unaware. There are people God got designed to pour into your life. But they will not know where to go if your light is not on. It's like a lighthouse. As beautiful as lighthouses are, they serve one purpose. Don't come this way because there is danger. That's the whole purpose of a lighthouse. 
You can fix it up as beautiful as you want it, but its whole purpose is to let you know this is shallow water. Don't come this way. Sometimes you might just be that lighthouse for somebody. They may not flock to you, but you're letting them know you don't want to do this. You don't want to go down that path. That's why God saved you. There is no light like your light. God doesn't change your character. He defines your character. So many of us get saved and we try to do a complete metamorphosis. We try to act like what saved people should act like. And guess what? You find yourself confused. You'll find yourself all crazy because you're like, I don't know what I should be doing. Never forget the example that Jesus gave when he saved Peter and Andrew. He told them he'll do what? Make them fishermen of men. He didn't change their character. He defined it. Matthew was a tax collector. He didn't change his character. He defined it. Even Judas, God bless you, even Judas. Judas was a treasurer. He tried to define his character. But sometimes you just don't want to let go. Yeah, yeah, you just don't. Judas just didn't want to let go. He always chased that dollar. Most of us look at, yeah, he sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, but even before then, he showed you who his character was. All you got to do is read about the woman with the alabaster box. Some of us are just selfish. We undercover selfish. That's all that is. Because what did Jesus say to him? Because he was like, Jesus, with this oil and what she's doing, we can, look, we can sell this to the poor. You know how y'all put on that front? You front Christians. You know how to talk to talk. You know how to walk to walk. Oh, you even know how to say the words that it takes to make people think you say it. But the, but the Bible talks about you love me with your lips, but your what? Heart is far from it. We need to quit playing church. We need to quit playing church. Because that's all we're doing, some of us. I'm not, but some of you. <laughs> you know what they say if the shoe fit? Nah, buy another set. Yeah, that's all he was doing. Lord, if we sell this, we can help the poor. And what did Jesus turn right around and tell him? The poor you're going to have with you always. Because he was selfish. That's how some of us are, selfish. We selfish. We selfish with our anointing. We selfish with our gifts. We selfish with our reasoning. I ain't going to do this unless they do that. Let me hear, look, don't nobody raise their hand, but ask yourself if you ever said this to yourself. Why am I the only one always doing fill in the blank? <laughs> Why am I the only one all? You know why you're the only one doing it? Because you're the only one who was designed to do it. All right. Because you was designed to do it. If everybody could do what you do, then there would be no need for you to do it. That's why your light is unique to you. Your light is unique to you. When I was in the Navy, they used to teach me about airplanes. They teach me different special forces, but here's the thing that they used to tell me. Every aircraft had its own unique light pattern. So even in the midst of darkness, I could tell you what plane is flying overboard. Why? Because I look at the light pattern. All of us are the same. We got our own light pattern. Don't change your course. Just allow God to define your character. Number two, keep your eye on the prize. You got to keep your eye on the prize. Why? Because if you lose focus of where God is trying to take you, this is when you start allowing things to interfere. I'm going to always remember something Minister Adams said. This is what she said. I think this was last year or was early in the year, correct me if I'm wrong. But she was riding, had to ride 15 miles, correct? Had to ride 15 miles. 
I mean, she was tired, didn't train for it because she was working and stuff. But she had made a commitment and she wanted to do some good for diabetes, correct? She was riding for diabetes. And lo and behold, a person that she wouldn't have thought of on her worst day became her riding partner. Now, that person wasn't a bad person. They just lived a lifestyle that wasn't necessarily conducive to what her lifestyle is. But you know what happened? It didn't even matter about their lifestyle. You know what ended up happening? That person was a light to her. Because not only did she ride what she was supposed to ride, she even rode a little bit for them. You know what that means? That means that nobody is an island to themselves. God is sending people your way to help you get to your destination. Just quit trying to define what that person looked like. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to keep your eye on the prize. Because if your eye is on the prize, you'll realize help when it comes. Yeah. But you know we fake Christians. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, we fake Christians. You know how you know you're a fake Christian? Let me help you with that. No, I got it. No, you need some help. No, I'm okay. Then you go home riding in the car. God, I just got to do this all by myself. Don't nobody want to help me. Don't nobody care about me. Don't nobody love me. The church don't love me. You know that's how you think. God's going to always send somebody there. You know what it is? That's called pride. It's called selfishness. If somebody offered to help you with something, then, then hey, take it. I'm guilty. People say, hey, you need help with that. No, I got it. I done been different places. I don't do it now. No problem. I don't get asked to go to many many places. But they say, hey, thank you for teaching or preaching. Here's a check. Oh, no, that's okay. You keep it. Bless your ministry. Offer me that check now. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I'm going to take it. <laughs> but I'm not going to take it because it's money. Here's what I'm finding out as I grow older. I'm speaking on myself. There are people that are designed to help you out. There are people that are designed to bless you. And if you turn them away, you rob them of their blessing. Amen. Amen. Some people have been gifted to give. Some people have been gifted to help. Some people have been gifted to support others. And every time you turn them away, you block them from their blessing. Because the flip side of that is, Lord, why am I asking people do they need help? Why am I trying to give and people keep telling me no? I'm just not going to do anything. Mm. Keep your eye on the prize. Saints, I'm telling you, if you're going to be a true Christian, keep your eye on the prize. Why? Because if you keep your eye on the prize, you're going to continue to be a light to other people. That's what we were doing. the light of the world. But let me know if you see Jesus walking down the street. I'm telling you right now, it's not going to happen. The closest we're ever going to get to Jesus is between your two elbows. That's it. The Jesus on the inside of you is the most Jesus most people have ever experienced. This is why it's important for us to keep our head up. This is why it's important for us to be encouraged. The Bible didn't say you wasn't going to have no dark days. The Bible didn't say you wasn't going to go through any trouble. But the problem that we have in this Christianity is that the Bible says that we are to encourage one another. But we're so focused on ourselves, we lack the ability to encourage one another. Amen. Oh, I can give you the church answer for that. Hey, brother, I'm going to pray for you. Oh, you ain't praying for them. I'm going to pray for you. Lord, bless them. Whatever they're going through, Lord, bless them. You know, you don't even have to pray to the Lord. Sometimes, sometimes you just pick up the phone and say, hey, what you going through? Sometimes people like that uh, telephone conversation better than your fake prayer. <laughs> yeah, because nine times ten, you really don't mean it. Well. You just up there saying, Lord, bless them. You just going through the ritual motion. Lord, bless them. Then when the Lord say, call them. Oh, uh, Lord, I'm busy. I got something going on. You, you see how that works? Um, I'm telling on myself. I'd rather tell on myself than to tell on you because then you may not come back. He, he talking about my business. He, he putting me on front street. Well, if you live on that street, move. <laughs> the other problem that we have is do not see 
with your physical eye. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that the devil is a master illusionist? Yes, he is. Some of these people, y'all have heard me talk about it before, man. Some of these magicians, I just don't know. I'm telling you, between David Blaine and that uh, Chris Angel guy, oh, yeah. hey, I think that's a little bit more than magic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's just me. But here's the point that I'm making. It's possible. Mm. Don't ever forget that. That's why you can't see with your eye. That's why you can't see. We saw one of Janae's favorite movies last week. Um, now You See Me Too. I'm not big into those movies. But I loved it. It was a good movie. But here's what I found out watching that movie. I'm like, I need to bring some of that stuff to church. <laughs> hey, I bring some of that stuff to church. We'll pack it out. <laughs> Why? Because it's full of hocus pocus and false imagery. And that's what people like. But what I'm here to tell you is this. Don't be the false light. Be the real deal. Why? Because in the darkest hour, people need hope. Yes, yeah. In the darkest hour, people need what's real. And you know what's real? Sometimes you just got to accept me for my bad habits. Yep. Well, come on. Sometimes, I just, I know sometimes, I just, if I'm going to be real with Christ, I got to accept you because you're fat. I got to accept you because you're skinny. I got to accept you because you got a head full of hair. I got to accept you because you're bald. I got to accept you because you're crippled. I got to accept you because sometimes you just want to lie. Sometimes you might just want to take a nip in a day. You might even be scratching six. I don't want you to scratch six, but if you scratch six and win, please break the church off a little bit. Here's the point that I'm making. I have to accept you for who you are. If I'm going to keep it real, Amen. if I'm going to be real before Christ, I have to accept you as you are. Yep. Yep. And that's your faults and all. Just like you have to accept me and my faults. Right. I'm not going to always be as articulate as I need to be. I might walk by you and don't say nothing to you. It ain't because I'm mad at you. It's just because I might have something on my mind. But this is the life of a Christian. This is the life of a person who wants to be a light barrier. Amen. We just had the Olympics. I love the Olympics. And one of the greatest honors you can ever have in the Olympics is carrying the torch. That's one of the greatest honors that you can have is carrying the torch for your country. Why don't we all carry the torch for our country, the country of Christ? Amen. Amen. I'm not knocking America. I believe red, white, and blue. I'll fight again if they call me up. All right. But I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about carrying up the blood-stained battle of Christ. Amen. How about carrying that torch? Amen. The flame that never goes out. Amen. Even when you done abandon it, it never goes out. Even when you decide to be selfish, it never goes out. Let's carry that banner. Let's carry that light. Let's be the light barrier. That is the greatest honor that you can ever have in life. It's carrying this torch. Number three, <coughs> remodel your walls in your home. You got to break down some walls. What do I mean by that? Some of you is bitter. Mm -hmm. Some of you is hurt. Mm -hmm. Some of you is disappointed. Mm -hmm. Not in Christ. Nobody really ever get disappointed in Christ. Those are some things you may not be able to understand. What I'm trying to tell you is break down the walls of people. Because mm -hmm. people hurt. People will destroy you. But what I'm telling you, according to this light, your light cannot shine effectively. It cannot shine effectively if you got a wall up. If you got a wall up, the only way that light going to shine is in that room. I don't know how many of you have been to Asian countries or, or understand Asian architecture. But when you go to a lot of Asian homes, no matter how big that home is, most of those homes are open space. They have a lot of open space. And it's part of their religion. Why? Because they believe that when you start having all these different corners and rooms and, and different things like that, you block the chi or you block the flow of the spirit. 
You know, they say that's why Americans are so ditch grown because we got so many compartmentalized rooms. Now, I'm not a big advocate of that. But what I'm saying to you is I understand that principle. I understand that concept. Because if you got walls up in your life, if you got walls up of bitterness, of hatred, of hurt, of pain, of distrust, you got to tear those walls down. And you have to trust that Jesus is going to take care of you. The reason most of us don't feel like Jesus can take care of us is because we serve Jesus on a part-time basis. With your lips you say, I'm always saved. With your lips you say, I am a born-again Christian. With your lips you say that I love God with all my heart. But in your heart, there is only certain limits you're going to go. This is why some of us have been married five and six times. This is why some of us has never been married. This is why some of us don't want to ever get married again. Why? Because you was with this one individual, male or female, and they just broke your heart and destroyed it. They took advantage of you and took everything that you had, took your self-worth, and you told yourself, I will never put myself in that situation again. And I understand that, but I'm telling you today, if you ever want to be broke in God, you better tear that wall down. But pastor, you just don't understand. Oh, I understand. Pastor hadn't always been saved. Amen. Oh, I understand. Pastor hadn't always been saved. None whatsoever. But let me tell you what I do know. I'm going to tell you just like I tell my daughter. The Bible says that a man that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. So the first thing I'm going to tell you of the female persuasion, if you are not married and you desire to be married, quit looking for that man. Because the Bible says, a man that findeth a wife. A man that findeth a wife. The reason most of us is in bad situations because you as a woman, young girl, little lady, young lady, whatever you desire to call yourself, you went out and find that tall, dark, and handsome, blonde, blue hair, 6'5", 2'4", 2% body fat, muscles, athletic, can jump out the gym, or a sweet tongue and sweet as sugar. You found him. And guess what? And because you found him, you found the trouble that comes along with him. Why? Because it takes a certain mindset to keep that up. Some of us is in trouble. Why? Because we found that 36, 24, 36. She will be. Well, it takes a lot to keep that up. Amen. So you got all of those problems. So I'm about to help you to find the thing. If you are the female persuasion, do not look for that man. Allow him to find you. In the meantime, though, there are some things that you can do. The Bible says that a man that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. So the question you need to ask yourself is, are you that good thing? See, you don't just get a, a, a pass on this. Are you that good thing? What is that good thing? Are you making your own money? Do you have your own place? Are you able to take care of your own bills? Do you love the Lord more than anything in yourself? If you made some mistakes, or not mistakes, I don't call children mistakes, but if you got your own children, are you taking care of your children the best way that you know how? Are you that good thing? Because if you're not that good thing, that's why he had knocked on your door. If you follow that basic principle in life, you would never have to worry about being heartbroken. But you got to trust God. We got walls up. Some of us got daddy hurts. Some of us got mommy hurts. Some of us got abuse hurts. You was molested. You was beaten. You was physically abused, mentally abused, sexually abused. Oh, yeah, there's many reasons why you got a wall. All I'm sitting here telling you is give God a chance to take that wall down. Because as long as you got that wall up, you can never be 100% effective for Christ. Anybody ever walked into a room and a light bulb was half dim because it was going out? As much as that light was, it's still bad for your eyes. And some of you are bad for people's eyes. Why? Because you are half white. I'm not telling you that it's easy. I'm not telling you you can just do it at the drop of a dime. But what I am telling you is God has put somebody in your life who's a master carpentry in the area that you need to tear down to help you tear down that wall. 
Saints, if we don't start tearing down the walls in our heart, because I'm going to tell you what that starts breathing, it starts breathing unforgiveness. That's right. And if you're not walking in forgiveness, you can never be fully effective. Sometimes, some of you got some hurt that I'm sorry just is not going to remove. Amen. That person who hurt you can tell you I'm sorry, but you're just not going to allow it. Because you, just, you know, I, I don't know about to raise their hand, but sometimes pain and discomfort is comfort. Because you don't, you, you have built and lived so long that you've gotten in this comfort spot. And you just don't want to move. It's like being in the bed and finding your spot. And one of your bad kids just run in the room and jump on you. And you lost your spot. And you can't find it again. Because they in the room. Maybe I'm the only one to go through that. I would love to say it was just my younger kids, but it's all six of 24, 22, 17, 15. Oh, I'm just going to get in the bed. I told my wife, we get rid of our cow king bed. We going down to a full size bed. <laughs> yeah. If they ain't got no room for them, they can't get in the bed. Here's the point that I'm making. Some of us love misery. You ever watch that show Hoarders? And you sit there and you watch them, and you look at them and you say, why they just can't move? Because mentally and spiritually, they built themselves into comfort. And when you have done that, you are afraid of what's next. And I'm here to tell you that if you're going to be a light barrier for Christ, you got to be able to know what's next. you got to be able to forgive and allow somebody to come in because you can't do it by yourself. For as much as the Lord and Savior is our Lord and Savior, and I love Jesus more than anything, I do. But even Jesus couldn't do it by himself. He needed those 12 disciples. Within the 12 disciples, he had three. He needed those. For as much as our Lord and Savior is God, God cannot save this world without you. Because if he could, he would already do it. He don't need you. He's all powerful. He could just speak. Everybody saved and they'll be saved. But in his infinite wisdom... For whatever reason, he decided to include us in the plan. This is why we are the light bearers. That's why you got to you got to understand the brightness of your light. If you don't understand the brightness of your light, then you can never be the type of person. I'm glad we got this. Look at this cross. You got two orange lights, a green light, and a white light. All combined, it makes a picture. They give a certain brightness to that. Not only does it give a certain brightness to it, it gives it a certain what? Texture. What am I saying to you? If we all shine the same brightness, if we all had the same color light, then this whole world would just be bland. Mm -hmm. Some of you are the orange light. Some of you are the green light. Some of you are the white light. Understand the brightness of your light. Understand if you are a DLP bulb or LED bulb. Some of us got to upgrade. How many of you still go to the store and buy the most soft white light bulbs? That costs 28 cents a bulb. Talking about you saving money, then complaining on your light bill. Yeah, that's how that works. You spend a little bit. Spend a little bit and get that light bulb. That's that LED light bulb. Yes. It costs $18 per bowl. Yes, it does. But, they work. but I tell you what, your house will not be as hot and they last Amen. three to four times longer than a regular bulb. Amen. Some of you are still shopping at the dollar store getting them cheap light bulbs. Good Lord. You saw me there, didn't you? <laughs> I, I'm just telling you, saints, we got to upgrade our bulbs. Some of you have been saved for 10 years, still functioning off of the same light you did 10 years ago. Allow God to upgrade your wattage. They don't deal in 100 watts, 75 watts. 
and 60 watts anymore. They've upgraded from that. Now they deal with 15 watts. And if you got that old school mentality, you're like, why would I want with a 15 watt bulb? Because it's an LED bulb, that's why. You don't want an LED bulb pushing out 100 watts. You'll burn up your whole house. That's why we gotta upgrade. We gotta upgrade. We gotta upgrade. If you don't upgrade your Christ in you, you're going to still be functioning off the old body. So Amen. therefore, your light will not be Amen. as bright as it should be. Amen. You're still running around quoting stuff from yesteryear. And people have moved on. I'm having to learn that stuff too. I actually, I, Janae is my young people leader in my life. If I see something that I don't like, I say, Janae, what does that mean? Especially these uh, Twitter talks and textbook text lettering, R-O-T-F-L-N-G. I don't know what that means. Janae, what does that mean? And she'll tell me, okay, thank you. And I keep it moving. I don't know, but it would be one thing if I discredit it. Oh, I'm not going to ever learn that. Guess what? Then I'll never be able to talk to young people. Because I understand, and me being a young person, and them being a young person is a whole different era. That's why I'm always sending them pictures about when I was in high school so they can see their dad. Hey, this is what your dad looked like. Oh, dad, you was ugly then too. <laughs> yeah, that's what I put up with. <coughs> I sent them one picture. I said, hey, this is a picture of me when I was in high school. You know what they saw? Dad, why are you in between two women? What? I just want you to see me. Now, they see two women. I'm like, I was in high school. Well, you know, now I don't know. Them my kids, I love them. The point that I'm making to you is this. If we don't learn today's technology, if we don't learn how to witness today, if we don't learn how to understand what God is doing in these times, then we will never understand the brightness of our lights. We have to grow you got to be able to grow. you got to be able to grow. If you're not willing to grow, then you're not willing to understand who Christ really is. I understand who Jesus is. No, you don't. You don't understand who he is. You understand what the Bible says about him, but you don't understand who he is. You know, I, I had somebody tell me the other day, well, you can't do that. Why not? Because Jesus didn't do it. I'm like, what? Well, Jesus didn't do it. And I always hit him with my favorite line. Jesus didn't have a cell phone either. <laughs> yeah, usually that ends the conversation. Because then they, you, you mixing apples and oranges, am I? You trying to tell me Jesus didn't do something that we're doing today. And I'm trying to tell you, what does that got to do with the price of tea in China? Jesus didn't wear suit coats. I had one pastor tell me, well, you know, you, you preaching in your preaching robe. Jesus didn't wear robes. He didn't. Jesus didn't wear robes like we wear robes. But you know what else I found out? Jesus didn't wear hands. <laughs> Jesus didn't wear Calvin Klein. He didn't even wear fruit of the loom. <laughs> So I'm trying to figure out how close to Jesus we going to follow. <laughs> I know it ain't rap tight, but I just get tired of people using Christ to define everything. Because if I'm really going to live like Jesus, I ain't wearing no socks. I'm going to wear some sandals. I'm going to get a big old diaper. Because I know they ain't have underwear, they ain't have elastic. <laughs> and I'm going to wipe my tail with leaves. <laughs> I'm just saying, if we're going to really break it down, then we're going to be like Christ. Man, don't let people get you caught up in foolishness. I understand, yes, there are some things that goes on in this pulpit that's just, it's not right. I, I got that aspect of it. But at the same time, I'm trying to figure out how much emphasis are we really putting on Christ and how much emphasis are we putting on theatrics. Since this is 
why you got to understand you. And the reason you got to understand you, because somebody going to challenge you on being you. And if you don't have an answer for that, then you're going to be lost. That's why everything we do, everything I do, I can give you an answer for why I do it. Right, wrong, or indifferent, I can speak on the faith that is of us. Saints, you best know your salvation. And last but not least, understand this. Jesus is the power. And you the bug. Your bug can only break as the power of electricity that flows to it. You know what? Some days you get weak. Some days you are tired. Some days you are frustrated. Husband the major man. Wife the major man. Kids the major man. The boss man the major man. The person that cut you off the major man. You know some of y'all some uh, road rage drivers. You sitting in the car by yourself. Somebody just jump in your lane. You got you to cut them out. But you can do that because ain't nobody in the car with you. Jesus heard you, though. <laughs> Here's the point I'm make. Some of us got issues. Some of us got issues, and I'm not telling you that your issues are right. I'm just telling you, embrace your issue and get help for it. Amen. That's all I'm saying to you, because Jesus is the electricity. And as long as you're not going to deal with that issue... Your bulb is not going to be that bright. You're going to have a short in your cord. That's why most of us be getting rid of these phone chargers. I'm telling you, it's a racket. Every three months, how many of you buy a new phone charger? See? And then you fool yourself because then you go to Sprint, Verizon, AT&T, you buy their card. You spend $40 because you think if I buy their card, you go buy another. Oh, yeah, it's a racket. Why? Because it's a short. But why does it get a short? Because of wear and tear. Yeah, wear and tear. Wear and tear. Then you go buy another car. Why am I using that as an analogy? I'm using that as an analogy because guess what? You're going to get a short. Why? Because of wear and tear. You're going to live this life. You're going to get some wear and tear. Amen. You're going to get some wear and tear in your prayer life. Amen. You're going to get some wear and tear in your fasting life. You're going to get some wear and tear as you read the Bible. And all the time it ain't gonna make sense. That's why you need to get a new cord sometimes. Every three months, get a new cord. Every three months, lay yourself before God and say, Lord, change me. Upgrade my system. If you drive a 5.0 Mustang today, guess what? It's gonna be faster than the 5.0 Mustang from 10 years ago. By the nature of what? Mechanics and upgrading of engine systems. Upgrade your system, saints. Amen. We got to continue to grow. This is why we strengthen one another. This is why we got to pray. And we got to fast. But here's something that we got a problem with. And I'm going to close it out. The one thing that we have a problem with is camaraderie. Jesus did not function without camaraderie. Saint, that's one of the most difficult things there is to learn. Because that means you got to have the ability to deal with other people. Amen. You got to deal with the clothes they're wearing. You got to deal with the attitude. You ever just met somebody who got an attitude all the time? Yes, Lord. Yeah. How you doing today? You ever met that person that you don't even want to ask them how they're doing? Because they don't really tell you. And two hours later, they still tell you. Jesus. You got to learn how to deal with them folks. I got a couple of them. Hey, I see their number. I'm like, do I have time? I'm telling you, I'm going to give y'all a secret. People who you got in your life that talk a lot. You know, you got some people, they just talk a lot. Yeah, they just talk to them. Want to talk. Talk to them at night. Yeah. People who talk a lot, talk to them at night. Want to know why? Because they got to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, I'm just telling you. They got to go to bed. You talk to them at 12 o'clock in the daytime if you want to. Hey, they got time. 
home about 6 or 7 o'clock at night, you'll get a 15, 20 minute conversation. What? Don't do it on the weekend, though. Do it during the week. What I'm saying is that we got to learn how to deal with each other. Jesus dealt with people. Jesus was the greatest people person that you can ever meet. Even the people who hated him. He knew how to deal with them. Saints, we got to learn camaraderie. We got to learn how to deal with each other. We can't build a kingdom. Amen. The kingdom can't be built by ourselves. I would love to say I'm talking about this church, but I'm really not. I'm really talking about the kingdom of heaven. Amen. It can't be built by one person. We need each other. And so what I advise you from this day forward, I advise you from this day forward, that when you go and you talk and you out there witnessing, figure out how to uplift somebody. Give them an encouraging word. You don't want to be that uh, person that every time you see how you doing, have a good day, but so good about it. You know, how you doing today? You really want to know? You ever meet them, Karen? Yeah. They all know. They, these Christians. Yeah, these are Christians acting this way. You know? Man, I, I, and I'm learning in the pastoral ship. I walk up to pastors. Hey. How you doing? Fine. And they just be like, wait, what? And they just keep on walking. Some of them ignore me. Yeah, I was preaching at one church. And they found, look, I was in shock. I'm like, man, Lord, you really did that. I was feeling good. I'm like, man, thank you, Lord, for using me. I was all excited. And this one pastor was walking off the pulpit. I'm standing right here like, man, thank you, Jesus. One kind of walk off the pulpit, walk back on the pulpit. How you doing? And kept on walking. <laughs> I said, Lord, see, them the people you want to catch a bow in the back of their head. <laughs> 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 and <they're> like, <laughs> 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 you know, I'm just telling. That's what cost your money, yeah. based on who you were. Now, some of y'all wasn't that way. I was that way. You well, catch a bow. Amen. But I, just, but I say, Lord, he's teaching me. And this is what he's teaching me. That's why I'm telling on myself. What he's teaching me is just because someone say they are a pastor, don't assume how they're going to be. Amen. Treat everybody as if you're meeting them for the first time. Amen. And I learned that. And I say, man, thank you, Lord. Okay, I got And ever since then, I ain't had a problem with a single pastor. Hey, how you doing? I shake hands. Why? Could I greet them as if I'm seeing them for the first time? But what I am learning as a pastor, what I'm learning as a man, what I'm learning as a husband, what I'm learning as a father is this. You're only going to know what your weaknesses are if you're willing to grow. If you stay where you're at, you will never see your weaknesses. But as soon as you start growing, you start seeing little cracks. Because even when that said, I'm like, wait, I ain't thought about bowing nobody in the back of the head for some years now. And you know what I learned? I got some areas I need working on. I ain't going to say I'm going to bow somebody. But what I will say is the thought came across my head. And I said, Lord, I can't, have, I can't be a pastor thinking like that. So I fixed it. And I addressed it. And I came across the situation again. And guess what? I didn't think about bowing somebody in the back of the head. I just went up and hugged them. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, I've grown. I tell them myself because that's what I have to do. But if you want to know if you're weak or not, grow. Because even in the country, they used to call it growing pains. Saints, if you don't want to grow, you don't want to know Christ for who he really is. Let us all stand.